Hello everyone, I'm Ambrush and my PhD topic is about the relationship between sedation, sleep and post-intensive care unit outcomes in critically ill children. Yeah, I work at the Department of Anesthesiology and Intensive Therapy and at the second department of pediatric at Samuel University. I like to improve uh, pediatric intensive therapy with protocolized set, uh, strategies, and I'd like to contribute to the creation and implementation of guidelines to improve pediatric critical care. To achieve my mission, I'm currently working on these three specific projects. The first one's title is Protocolized Sedation in the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit May Reduce Sedation Use But Not Ventilation Duration. It's a meta-analysis. We plan to submit it to JAMA Pediatrics next week. We are interested in this topic because sedation practice needs to be improved. About half of ICU admitted children are ineffectively sedated, which is a major concern because inadequate sedation leads to sedation-associated adverse events, which prolongs the duration of ventilation, which leads to further adverse events, which may contribute to the overall complication rate and increase the risk of mortality. However, in adult studies, protocolized sedation has shown to reduce adverse events. So we aim to compare the effectiveness and safety of protocolized sedation compared with usual care in the pediatric ICU population. Uh, we define the sedation strategy as protocolized sedation when the level of sedation was assessed and modified in individual patients based on a predefined algorithm. We primarily were interested in the duration of invasive mechanical ventilation and secondarily in the length of stay, the incidence of adverse events, mortality rates, and the exposure of sedatives and opioids. We hypothesized that protocolized sedation is superior. We've conducted a systematic search in these five major medical databases last October in this search key, and we found 18 eligible articles comparing protocol-directed sedation management with usual care primarily. We were interested in the duration of invasive mechanical ventilation, which was less than two hours shorter in the protocolized sedation arm, which was neither clinically nor statistically significant. We haven't found any differences in different uh, clinical settings and study designs. As uh, length of ICU stays stronger, strongly interrelated with the duration of ventilation, we investigated ICU length of stay as well, which was also a few hours shorter in the protocolized sedation arm, which was not significant. We also investigated the length of hospital stay as ICU discharge policies may be different in different studies where we found less than a day shorter duration in the protocolized sedation arm, which was also not statistically significant. Additionally, we investigated in the exposure to sedatives and opioids. Um, the duration of IV sedation, IV opioids were not significantly Shorter, however, the duration of intra intravenous benzodiazepines were significantly shorter in the protocolized sedation arm. We also observed a trend of reduction in the cumulative doses of opioids and benzodiazepines, and the peak doses of benzodiazepines were also significantly <laughs> lower in the protocolized sedation arm. Additionally, we were interested in the safety of this intervention and we observed no significant differences um, in the incidence of iatrogenic withdrawal syndrome, the incidence of unplanned extubations, extubation failure, and ICU mortality. So to sum it up, we've conducted the first meta-analysis investigating protocolized sedation in the PICU. We found 18 eligible articles with more than 10,000 patients. The last included article was published in 2021. However, we pulled together cluster RCTs, pilot RCTs, and non-randomized studies together. We observed substantial heterogeneity regarding some outcomes, and we observed unclear or serious risk of bias for certain domains, especially in non-randomized studies. Also, the overall quality of evidence for our main outcomes were assessed as low. So in conclusion, we cannot fully support the clinical benefits of protocolized sedation. 
but we observed a clear trend of sedation minimization without any harmful adverse events, and we have insufficient evidence regarding the long-term effects of this intervention, which means for practice that protocol-directed sedation management can be safely implemented. It may reduce the exposure to sedatives and opioids, but it does not significantly shorter the duration of ventilation and length of stay. We need further research to assess the long-term effects of this intervention. Our second topic is the disruption of circadian rhythm in the pediatric intensive care unit measured with actigraphy and its relationship with psychological outcomes, both our observational studies. We are interested in this topic because there are several factors that disrupt sleep in an ICU environment and the integrity of sleep-wake cycle is crucial in developing an adequate immunologic <coughs> response and has a role in neurocognitive development. And its disruption is associated with psychological disorders and may compromise physical recovery. We aim to measure the risk factors, the development, the progression, and the psychological impact of, of circadian cycle disruption in the PICU population. Here you can see my PICO. Primarily, we are interested in the objective measurement of sleep with actigraphy, and secondarily, the incidence of sleep and psychological disorders. We hypothesize that ICU admission, mechanical ventilation, and sedation <coughs> increase the risk of the disruption of sleep-wake cycle. We plan to determine the modifiable risk factors and the psychological impact of sleep disruption in the PICU. After enrollment from the ICU and from the open hospital ward, we measure sleep with uh, actigraphy, and during the follow-up phase, we measure psychological and sleep disorders with questionnaires. Here you can see the detailed description of our outcomes. We have our questionnaires, which we are using for the follow-up for psychological disorders. We have our ethical approval, and we started patient enrollment in last February, and we only have some preliminary results as we don't have enough data to draw a strong conclusion yet. <coughs> so in this overview, you can see all my ongoing projects and planned submission dates, and I'd like to thank you for your attention. My question is about your uh, observational studies. So you said the disruption in circadian rhythm yeah. is associated with poorer outcomes. Yeah. But my question is, to what degree is this association correlative or causative? Because it can be a correlation, it can be a causation. The real question is, did you have any strategies in your uh, clinical experiment design which would enable you to distinguish correlation from causation? Thank you for the question. It's an excellent question. You know that we can't have causative uh, results because we only conducted this as an observational study. We plan to measure the, we uh, have a baseline questionnaires for these uh, children that we enroll in our study, and after that we see the progression that after uh, the ICU admission and this environment, there is, are there any changes is regarding their sleep? And if they are, we might assume that ICU admission and sedation cause these problems, but we won't have results regarding the causality of these problems because we only conducted this observational study. My comment is, on, on your forest plots, I just yeah. discovered that instead of um, protocolized sedation, you write experimental everywhere. So I will uh, please change that before submission. Yeah, I know I've... Uh, you've I'm done that it. already, yeah. And, and the, yeah, okay, I know. <laughs> right, and, and the, the, the other question, that, <clears throat> that um, this age of less than 18, right? Yeah. It's... Um, I mean, this is an arbitrary definition of being a child less than eight. It's stupid. So would it not make sense to be provocative and reduce the, um, uh, the age group, age less than 10, who are really kids? Because, I mean, 
somebody in the age of 16, 17, I would not call, especially these days, them children, uh, right? So what is your opinion on that? Yeah, thank you for the question, and you have an excellent point, but it also is true for other age categories, so we cannot really um, compare the age of a one-year-old child to someone who's 15-year-old. Our major problem with this study is patient enrollment. From last February, we only have 20 patients, and that's why we don't have enough data to have any results. So we probably will do a subgroup analysis between different age categories as we use different questionnaires from, for different ages. So when we have enough data, we will compare different subgroups, and that's the most that we can do at this point. What kind of device uh, do you use uh, for uh, act actigraphy? Yeah. Actigraphy, uh, it's... Uh, how does it work? Yeah. Okay, thank you for the question. It's like a smartwatch. It measures uh, movement with a uh, three-axis uh, accelerator meter. It, we also measure pulse wave variability and body temperature. And based, of the, uh, based on these data, we do a circuit, uh, we use cosinar analysis and we see how it fits the model for a normal circadian rhythm based on movements, basically. I have a very similar question. So you use actigraphy, and as far as I know, you extract the, the daytime activity from the actigraphy. Yeah. But, um, so my suggestion is, uh, I'm not a big fan of actigraphy actually, but uh, the REM sleep can be actually quite well detected from uh, actigraphy, because it has some specific features. But uh, if you have REM data, that's probably the best for your study because you want to measure like long-term sleep quality, emotional processing, many, many features which can be important in the ICU. So if you haven't considered to extract these kind of data, you should. That's my suggestion. REM can be a very important thing for you. And nowadays it's kind of a hot topic at the ICU to, to extract these kind of data. Thank you, as our, our, my, my only primary outcome will be the daytime activity ratio. I will also extract all kind of data regarding the objective measurement of sleep. So thank you for the suggestion. Always. Yeah, <laughs>